The Internet will never be the same. You're listening to K98talk.com. In these uncertain economic times, you've got to do whatever you can to save money. One of our biggest expenses can be our cars, especially when unexpected repair bills hit. Not anymore. If you own a vehicle with less than 130,000 miles, is less than 12 years old, has a warranty about to expire, or even no warranty at all, you could stop paying for car repairs. Roadside assistance, towing, and rental coverage are all included. Don't wait for the next repair. Make one free call right now to see if you qualify. If your vehicle vehicle is less than 12 years old, has less than 130,000 miles, even if it's out of warranty, paying for car repairs can become a thing of the past. Call us right now and get your car protected before your next repair bill hits. Get protection and no more repair bills. Call 800-696-1030. Again, 800-696-1030. That's 800-696-1030. 800-696-1030. Joe had huge problems with the IRS. I knew it was coming. I hadn't filed taxes since 1990. All the IRS letters coming in added up to a nightmare. It got up to like $68,000. My heart started beating fast. It's like, there's no way, man. I mean, I ain't going to be able to do this. Then they stopped his paycheck. So that's when I started making phone calls and found U.S. Tax Shield. U.S. Tax Shield went to work immediately. They just took the bull by the horns. What blew my mind is he called the IRS right then and there. So why is U.S. Tax Tax Shield A plus rated with the Better Business Bureau? Joe knows. They saved me a ridiculous amount of money. If you owe more than ten thousand dollars to the IRS or state, choose the company Joe chose. U.S. Tax Shield. It was the best decision I made. U.S. Tax Shield is the way to go. Life is good. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Call eight hundred four seven one thirty two eighty seven. U.S. Tax Shield. Boo raw. Yes. <laughs> 800-471-3287. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention please? America off the rails is to be very conservative, only safe zone. Only conservatives allowed from this point forward. Any liberal, socialist, butthurt, hippie, tree huggers, please exit the facility immediately. Again, attention please. America off the rails is now designated as a conservative safe zone only. All butthurt, tree hugging, hippie, free to be you and me types exit the facility immediately. Thank you. We will keep this promise to the American people. If you like your doctor, you will be able to keep your doctor, period. If you like your health care plan, you will be able to keep your health care plan, period. This is the most transparent administration in history. Not even a smidgen of corruption. Fact is, we had four dead Americans. What difference at this point does it make? If you've got a business, you didn't build that. Oh, welcome to the face. Welcome to the face. Keep on doing what you do, Rick. You're my favorite host, favorite host, favorite host. It's time to hear the truth about America's biggest challenges. You're listening to America Off the Rails with your host, Rick Robinson. Well, good evening, folks. This is America Off the Rails. I'm your host, Rick Robinson, and we have officially made it to hump day. Now, before we get too far into this, I have to put my general manager's uh, hat back on for a second. I have an announcement to make. For those of you who uh, listen to the intro right there, the person at the very end who says it's time to hear the truth about America's biggest problems, that is one Mr. John Wright, formerly with KTOK AM 1000 here in Oklahoma City, um, also formerly now with K98 Talk and the Spark Radio Network. He has been offered a, uh, a gig with multiple outlets to do promo work for them. So we here at K98 Talk and the Spark Radio Network just want to take a second to say, John, we're going to miss you. We appreciate your years of loyalty, and we hope that the future is as bright for you as it appears to be for us, and you will always have a home here no matter what. 
Um, the he's made he made that announcement to me a while ago, but we were holding off to be sure. Um, he did just sign the agreement today. So as of now, uh, the voice of K98 Talk and the Spark Radio Network is essentially no more. We have an agreement in place to continue to run the things that we have from him currently. Uh, but it looks like we'll be looking for someone else to do our voiceover work soon. Again, John, it's been great. We wouldn't have gotten where we are without you. And I'm glad that somebody else saw that you still had a lot of uh, talent to give. And I hope things work out for you well in the future. All right. That being said, I haven't done this in a while, so I want to give a big shout out to the affiliates. We're going to start out from the beginning. Of course, we have K98 Talk, uh, the station that picked us up first that is actually owned by a friend of mine. I am I uh, was shortly after the inception of the station appointed as the general, general manager. We have the Spark Radio Network, which is the network that I'm building and I am the owner of, which, of course, is the one that carried us all from the beginning. Um, then we have AMFM247.com, where the show can be heard every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 1 Eastern on several low-power AMFM affiliates as well as their live 365 st- uh, stream. Now, also, shortly after that, we were picked up by Red State Talk Radio, where this show can be heard every Sunday at 6 a.m. Eastern. So if you're an early riser, what you can do is about 5 o'clock our time, get up, grab some coffee, hang out with me over on Red State, and then if you're getting ready for church, flip right back over to K98 Talk. You can hang out with the host of God's Pure Word of Faith, one Mr. Richard Harden, from about 6 to 8 on Sunday mornings while you're getting ready for your church service, or if you can't make it, tune in there you can get about two hours worth of good church all right and then of course we have leading edge radio network where this show can be heard every day then we have shr media the show is carried monday wednesday and friday at 11 a.m eastern then we have high point radio where the show can be heard every day and that is another low power affiliate in jersey and last but not least that is of course if i'm not forgetting anyone as far as the uh the streaming content, we have AMFM247.com, where the show can be heard every Thursday at 2 Eastern. We are in negotiation to be aired more, but so far it's just been one of those years. I, I, I don't want to commit to five uh, hours a week over there and then wind up only being able to deliver two or three. So we're still trying to figure it all out, but I want to thank everybody who made 2015 the biggest year we've had yet. 2016 has a lot in store for everybody. So again, want to give you a great big thank you. Speaking of thank yous, want to give a shout out to some uh, sponsors that I haven't been able to do for a while. I do encourage you to go check them out. Uh, they were actually some of our original sponsors. There's concealandcarry.net. Pretty easy to find on the website, on the interwebs. Just go put the word conceal, the letter N, the word carry, and then .net at the end. It'll take you straight to their website. Now, especially with all of these crazy executive orders and all these things that are going on with with ammunition and weaponry, great time to check. <coughs> pardon me. Great time to check them out. Uh, they do offer um, in your area. If you go, if you go to their website, you'll see a map of all fifty states. Click on the state that corresponds to you. You'll find ammunition dealers, uh, weapon dealers, and even facilities where you can get the training that you need to be able to legally carry those weapons. Uh, should your particular state allow, of course, uh, always consult with your state's uh, local laws, rules, and regulations before purchasing a firearm. Just my little public sa- public safety announcement there. Um, then the next ones on the list were Art is War. Uh, some of you, and we'll be making those announcements over the next couple of weeks, we've been collecting email addresses now for a while from folks that have been entering contests. Uh, that one is about to come to a close for now, but I am about to send them the emails that we've gotten. And that means a few of you within the next uh, couple of weeks will be receiving free t-shirts. We'll make those announcements once we have everything figured out. We also have Rebel Road Tactical. You hear their spot pretty much every time this show runs. He is doing a giveaway. Uh, we're still trying to get all of the kinks worked out on that one, though. Um, so if you are interested in trying to be as part of that giveaway, he is giving away one custom holster of your choice. It's pretty, pretty easy to sign up. Now, we will be making some changes. A lot of these contest entries will be going over to our network website because we are starting to branch out onto so many different platforms. We want to make everything easy for everybody to find. Um, but for now, you can go to k98talk.org. If you just click on the chat room section, you'll see the contest contest entry form right there. You can pick from either um, Art is War or Rebel Road. Pick whichever one you want. Um, and like I said, if you are lucky enough to be chosen, you will get a free custom-made holster. Um, 
made out of Kydex. So I, I do heartily recommend their products. And we have a new sponsor uh, starting within the next few days. Um, a perfect one for this time of year, politicalbrick.org. They're actually going to be sending me some samples. So once we have them and I've determined how many they're sending, we will probably start a giveaway with the stuff that they're supplying us as well. So we'll get all that information added to the website soon. Now, these are just a few of the folks that have gone out of their way to allow us to not only help them build up their businesses, but also to help us build ours along the way, along with some of these other sponsors that you're now here on a regular basis. So again, 2015 was a great year from us. Uh, it was actually our best year ever, and 2016 is already on track to be better than 2015. And that's because of each and every one of you, whether you take the time to listen when we're live through one of the affiliates that plays everything as a, some of our stuff as a replay or through things like iHeart or the other places where our podcasts are available. I just want to take a moment because I haven't done it in a long time to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I would do this whether any of you were listening or not because I am just that crazy. But it is great to know that so many of you listen, and not only to me, but so much of the rest of the content that we offer here as well. So again, thank you very much for your time and your consideration, because I know in this day and age, there are thousands and thousands and thousands of choices at your fingertips. It is an honor that so many of you choose to hang out with us every day. So thank you. All right, so I've 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 done, I've said the goodbyes. I've given the nod to the sponsors. I've given the nod to the affiliates. So let's just talk. If you missed it last night, we did a special America Off the Rails Roundhouse edition, which is typically what we call it when we have a roundtable. Uh, there there will be another of those tomorrow night after the debate. So it will not just be me. Um, it will be in, on in my time slot. So again, it will be an America Off the Rails Roundhouse edition. Uh, most likely joined again by JD, Stacy, Lou, hopefully Dr. A. Still trying to talk at least one or two more people in to join him, but we'll do what we can do to get it done. Um, now, last night, we kind of had a little bit of fun at the president's expense. Um, come on, when's not a good time to do that? I'm just saying. But at the same time, tonight we're going to take things in a little bit more serious direction. And we're actually going to take a blow-by-blow -blow look at a lot of what he said last night and pick it apart. Now, I'm not going to do what a lot of show hosts do, and I'm not going to play the clip and then tell you, well, these are the actual numbers, blah, 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 blah. I'm going to play the clip. I'm going to give you my opinion, and then I'm going to leave it up to you, the smartest audience in talk radio, to go find the facts for yourself. I'm not trying to tell you that you should hate the guy because I don't like him or that you should dislike what he does because I don't like what he's done. I'm telling you the reasons why I don't think he's a good president and what I think about the things that he's done, and then I want you to form your own opinions. So I'm here to inform you, and I'm here to make you think. That doesn't always mean that I'm going to do your homework for you, though. Just being honest. Some of the only ways that you can actually learn things is by doing it on your own. There's a reason why up until the electronic age we didn't hand our children all the information they ever needed at their fingertips because it stops you from being able to creatively think to just be able to type in a search engine and go oh look what I found this answers all my questions not that it hasn't made my life as a talk show host a little bit easier just saying come on I'm just being honest here alright so let's go ahead and get started with that and then we'll finish up the last little bit of the show uh, probably talking about some of the debate stuff. And actually, before I forget and we get into the State of the Union, I want to do this in reverse. Uh, we're going to talk about the Republican response for a minute. And folks like um, Debbie Wasserman Schultz, who basically made the comment that the only reason the Republican Party picked a woman was because they have a diversity problem. First of all, Nikki Haley is the youngest female governor ever, and she's done a pretty bang-up job. Just saying. And the fact that your party right now and your front runners of your party make it look like the old white Geritol party, um, you probably really shouldn't talk to so much trash about our party when at least we do have diversity. You guys are always the ones talking about how we're the party of the old white people and look at your front runners. Just throwing that out there. All right. And also, to one Mr. Trump, who I just found out will be in Oklahoma at some point later this week or next. Why would you, uh, even if it was somebody that works for you, why would you start tweeting out about someone needing to be deported? I'm just asking. 
I mean, look, I don't, I don't get it. I, I really don't understand it. You know, because it, it's not that I, I mean, look, I don't know Trump personally, so I can't tell you whether I like him or I dislike him. I can tell you that I've known people like him my entire life, and I don't like those type of people. I don't like those type of people who go out of their way just to tell everybody what they want to hear in the hopes that they're going to get something in return. That annoys me to no end. And I'm not saying that there haven't been times when probably all of us have done that when we were first learning who we were, trying to be the people pleasers, you know, going around saying, well, yeah, I can do this and I can do that and I can do this and I can do that and I can do some more of this for you and I can do this and I can do that and I can do this. It's freaking exhausting. But there are people that never grow out of that phase of their life and I honestly think that Donald Trump is one of those people. He is still going around telling everybody what he thinks they need to hear so that he can get something from them, which is their vote. The problem that I have, and it's something that is apparent in everything that I see, almost every time that I turn around, is absolute power corrupts absolutely. And the last thing that Donald Trump needs is more power. It's already been shown, in my opinion, from the way that he treats people that disagree with him and the way that he calls for the censorship of the people that disagree with them and the way that he calls for the deportation of the people that disagree with him, that the last thing this man needs is more power. You can call him a transformational candidate. You can tell me that I'm making a big deal over nothing. We can agree to disagree. Because I've already told you my two cents on Trump. The day that he came out making fun of somebody with a developmental disability... He lost me. I've been one of those guys. Through circumstances that were beyond my control, I have been made fun of a lot of my life, and it took me a while to get comfortable again. And maybe I have a chip on my shoulder when it comes to that. Maybe that's part of it. But when I saw the things that he was doing when he was mocking that reporter, never mind what he said and the fact that he, that he basically made himself sound like a special needs person, that irritates me. Look. For those of you born that way, I get it. I really do. It's a hard thing to it's a hard thing to deal with. To realize that for your entire life you're gonna be different than everybody else. And when you're that much different than everybody else, it takes a really long time to get comfortable in your skin. I know it took me a very long time to get comfortable in my skin again. To the point now where, honestly, one of the ways that I found to cope with it was I got so tired of everybody making fun of me that I just started making fun of myself. Did it start out as an unhealthy thing? Probably. It, it was a coping mechanism, though. And now it's desensitized me to it so much that it's basically just how I roll now. I mean, for those of you who don't remember how this show started, it st or this whole radio network started, it started with a completely different show that is now called Finding Common Ground. That is not the original name of the show. The original name of the show, when Dave and I both started it, because we're both disabled, I have a wobble, he's missing a hand, so... When I walk, I look a little particularly interesting, but I'll take walking over rolling any day of the week. Uh, Dave doesn't have his right hand. He's only left-handed. But the original name of the show, because we came up with these campy ideas for caricatures and everything else, was Wobbles and Nubs Present My Two Cents. That show's been around for about six years. Through this current iteration of Finding Common Ground, it's been around for about four. Um, so... My point is if you want to know one of the reasons why I cannot stand Donald Trump, it's because the last thing that somebody needs that is already different than everyone else and has to struggle just to do the things that everybody else takes for granted is for somebody in a position of power to basically thumb their nose at them and say, you're, you're, you're worth less than me because I'm normal and I have money. So, Donald Trump, you're going to be in Oklahoma in the next couple of weeks. And I know you have people that listen to podcasts. I know you do because I see comments about podcasts all the time. So, I'm going to, I, I'm going to make a suggestion and, and throw down the gauntlet. I know you're going to be in my state within the next few days. You want to come on my show and defend, not in your usual bombastic way, but defend 
what you said and did in regards to that reporter, then you are more than welcome to come on to my show. We will have a nice little chat, see if maybe you can change my mind. But I have to tell you, sir, it's probably a lost cause. <laughs> now, didn't really mean to go off on a Trump tangent, but it all kind of goes back to where we started um, because that's everybody's biggest uh, issue with the State of the Union response from the Republican Party last night was because they felt like she took the time to use that platform to take shots at Donald Trump. I have to tell you, I listened to it. I didn't necessarily find it as much a criticism as stating a fact, and I also thought that she put together very cogent points that outline the differences between what it is that we as conservatives want as opposed to what the Democrats want. So, what I don't understand is all of you pro-Trump supporters, whether you want to, whether you're, you know, I mean, there's so many different nicknames for you guys now. We've got Trumpkins, we've got Trumpets, uh, Trumpets, I don't even know. Um, some that really aren't so nice, so I'm not going to say them on the air. But at the same time, anytime anybody disagrees with you, you tear them th- to shreds but it's okay for you to disagree with everybody else and we're supposed to just go along to get along all right so that's pretty much all i have to say about the the republican uh response is i thought she did a great job i thought it was fairly cogent and compared to what the uh, republicans almost said democrats but at this point there's really not that much of a difference uh compared to what the republicans have offered over the last couple of years i thought she did a fairly good job All right, so we're going to go ahead and dive straight into the State of the Union. We've got quite a few clips we want to play. I may not necessarily get to all of them, um, or I may skip parts of them, but we're still going to kind of go point by point over some of the biggest things that I thought mattered uh, in regards to the State of the Union and talk about them. Here's the first one. Work for us, always extending America's promise outward to the next frontier, to more people. And because we did, because we saw opportunity where, the, where others saw peril, we emerged stronger and better than before. What was true then can be true now. Our unique strengths as a nation, our optimism and work ethic, our spirit of discovery, our diversity, our commitment to rule of law. These things give us everything we need to ensure prosperity and security for generations to come. In fact, it's in that spirit that we have made progress these past seven years. All right, so we're going to stop right there for just a second, then we're going to start the clip up again. So did anybody notice the part where he talked about the rule of law? This is the president who has passed so many executive orders. And I'm not talking like the little executive orders like pardoning turkeys or executive orders of this day shall forever henceforth be known as purple plaid pink polka dot day to honor those of you with alternating skin colors or whatever. I'm just I'm saying you know, I mean, we're talking like uh, things that even Saturday Night Live is made fun of. You know, the the amnesty program through executive order. Now he's attacking gun control through executive order. And I even heard from one Dan Rather today who has now gone to the little two or three minute segment on AM radio stations talking about applauding what it is that President Obama is trying to do with gun control and that every president should lead with their heart. You know, that sounds really great on paper. But let me remind you of something. Hitler led with his heart. He believed everything that he told his people. With his whole heart, he believed that the Jews were out to destroy the Germans. With his whole heart, he believed that if he rid the German nation of the Jewish people, his people would be great again. He believed all of that with his heart. So let me tell you where we start running into problems. 
where we start running into problems is where we, is when we start allowing our heart to override our rule of law. And the same president who just said our reliance on our rule of law is what makes us great again thumbs his nose at that concept every single day. Look at everything that he's done. Go back and look on your own. I'm not even going to make the claims of all of these people that say he's done more executive orders than any other president in history. Because you know what? I've looked and I'm not necessarily sure that's true. I think he's getting close at this point. But I don't think he's quite there yet. I think he's made some of the most dangerous executive orders of any president in history. And these gun grab ones will be nothing different. Speaking of gun grabs, before we move on to the rest of the clip, you know, it's interesting because I have all of these lefties that hang out on my Facebook page and everywhere else are like, oh, you, uh, you conservatives are crazy because you think Obama wants to come after your guns, blah, 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 blah. Nobody wants your guns. You guys are just crazy. We just want better rules. And then there's a dude that posts something in a Facebook group that's like, one of these days... My fearless leader, Obama, is going to allow me and those like me to come into your home and confiscate your guns by force, and I cannot wait for that day. And you wonder why we're a little paranoid. Because, you know, one conservative says something like that, and our whole movement is evil. Um, sauce for the goose, maybe? All right, let's keep going. That's how we recovered from the worst economic crisis in generations. Uh, I don't think we had that. That's how we reformed our health care system and reinvented our energy sector. That's how, that's how we... That's how we delivered more care and benefits to our troops coming home and our veterans. That's how we... That's... That's how we secured the freedom in every state to marry the person we love. All right, so let's let's kind of look over those things that he said. Um, freedom to marry anyone that we love. Let's kind of do it backwards. Um, all right, cool. So as far as I'm concerned, that should have remained a states' rights issue um, because then if there were states that you felt weren't treating you fairly, you had the option to move. Um, am I alone in that minority? No. Am I in a minority? Not really, but I'm treated as such. Because, again, we have a president who leads with his heart. Better care for our returning soldiers and veterans. I think over the last year and a half, we've actually discovered that the Veterans Administration has run their hospitals in such a shoddy way that people are dying from lack of care. There was a time when if you talked to the Democrats about their ideas for socialized medicine, they would tout the VA. Now they run from it because it's broken. It's been broken for months. It's been broken for years. And it's still it's still broken, and yet this president takes a victory lap, knowing knowing that so many veterans have died waiting for the health care that they needed. We're recovering from the worst recession ever. Okay, so maybe it was a pretty bad recession, probably one of the worst ones that we've ever had. But have we honestly recovered yet? If so, where where's the recovery? It's kind of like that old, that old Wendy's commercial. You know, you get a hamburger, you take one look at it, you can't see the br the meat anywhere because all you see is bun, and you're looking around going, where's the beef, okay? So if there's a recovery, where's it at? We supposedly have the lowest jobless rates in decades. I think he, I believe he said since our highest uh, job creation rate since the 90s was one of the clips that we'll get to here in a minute. Um, first of all, we may have some of the highest job creation rates since the 90s, but how many of them are 32 hours or less? Or, I'm sorry, 31 hours or less, because, you know, 32 hours means that you automatically have to put your employees in the Obamacare system if you're not providing other forms of insurance. Which brings me to another point where he talked about how they better reformed the medical system. 
Our medical system is in shambles. The, the Obamacare system, or the Affordable Care Act, whichever way you prefer to call it, was designed to make sure that the people that couldn't afford health insurance were allowed to receive health care. You know what it does instead? It takes the people that couldn't afford to get the health insurance in the first place and finds them now because they can't afford the health insurance that they couldn't get in the first place. And yeah, they can, they can move the numbers around and shuffle them around all they want. It's a lot like the labor participation numbers. Those are all, sh- uh, those are all flubbed now too. They've been being flubbed since the, the Bush administration. Nobody wants to talk about that though. If they were looking at the actual labor participation, paid to talk for a living can't pull it off. If they were looking at the actual labor participation rates, these would be the worst numbers since the Great Depression. It would be so bad that our the the stuff that we are supposedly over and still, in my opinion, currently going through would probably be being called the Second Great Depression, not the Great Recession. But they figured out a way to fudge the numbers. It's called Common Core Math. There's a reason they're teaching this to our kids. They do not want an educated populace. They want a populace that understands just enough to do basic tasks and not enough to question the government that is set before them. And that's the scary thing about the neoliberalism, the neoliberalism movement. Because, you know, there's a difference between the liberalism of today and classic liberalism. Classic liberalism inf- inspired free thought. It inspired education. It's now become the exact opposite. We have students in college campuses screaming for safe zones. In case nobody's figured it out yet, that's basically willing segregation. I only want to be around the people that are like me because I only feel safe around the people that are like me. And yet, we're supposed to be so much better off than we were. Look at those jobless numbers for yourself. Look up the information about the the labor participation numbers and see how they've been being flubbed. And I do believe it may have even been so far back as either the Clinton administration or Bush 41. But those numbers have been being flubbed for a very long time. And they've been that way on purpose. We are a service-based economy. We have been for a very long time. When you are a service-based economy, you have to have people that are willing to spend money. The only way the consumer is willing to spend money is if they have high confidence. So that's why every time, no matter who it is, conservative, or I'm sorry, I'm not even going to do that, Republican or Democrat, they always tell you what you want to hear. Because if you don't spend your money, and please, please, please rewind in your heads back to Bush 41 just after the 9-11 incident where he started basically begging the American people to go shop again. Leave your homes, go back to restaurants, go into your stores. You know why he did that? Because if we don't shop, our economy dies. And if we knew just how bad the numbers were, we wouldn't shop. We would be putting money in cans and burying it in our yards in the hopes that if our economy survived, we would still have some money left when it was over. Because that's what they did in the Great Depression. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Everything that this man said last night was a lie. It was designed to get you in your feels, to make you feel good about everything that he spoon-fed you for the last eight years. And I even know people that up until last night I thought were conservative that listened to that speech and have specifically said they agreed with 90% of what he said. Won't be mentioning any names. I'm not going to do that to them. But what I am going to do is I'm going to tell you that if you are listening to someone who's basically telling you what you need to hear and lying to your face, lying to your face, and you're buying a hook, line, and sinker, then you're in worse shape than anybody thinks our government is. All right, so we've got to take a really quick break. I didn't expect all those shout-outs and everything that I really wanted to do at the beginning of the show to take up quite so much room, but we're going to get as much through the State of the Union as we can. I am Mr. Rick Robinson. This is America Off the Rails. I'll be back just in a couple minutes after we pay some bills. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Calls. We got a pen and telephone. 
All right, folks, this is Rick Robinson with you. I want to tell you about some friends of mine from a company called Security Enforcement Specialists. When I ran my security agency for 12 years, I worked with one of these partners on a daily basis. He's been involved in this agency now, and with his other partner, they do have over 30 years of experience in the private security industry. If you own a business and you need someone to keep you or your customers or residents safe, then I highly recommend contacting Security Enforcement Specialists today. Give them a call at 405-703-1796. Again, that's 405 703 Again, Again, tell them Rick from K98 Talk sent you. Like I said, if you need the help, they are here for you. So make sure that you uh, go look them up, check them out, and see what they can do. The wrong way. Welcome to the This is Slickery Trigger for Rebel Road Tactical. With proper care and feeding, your pistol will be ready when you need it. There to save your life. Shouldn't your gear be that good? Whether you need a holster for comfortable everyday carry or a tough as nails holster for your next training course, Rebel Road Tactical has what you need. Check us out on the web at rebelroadtactical.com. guys we're ready for our four season sunroom and daddy's gonna get a rec room with refreshments oh no we'll be sleeping under the stars mom what about the one with you know the fun nice try little bro it's a gym my gym hey grandma's getting her four seasons garden room weather tight and still like being outdoors maybe a living room oh no wait a family hub yeah yeah no matter what the budget, the season, or the climate, Four Season Sunrooms let you and your family enjoy the outdoors inside. Call now to receive your free, no-obligation brochure from the premier manufacturer of sunrooms since 1975. More reasons for four seasons now. To find out more, call toll-free 800-928-7007. That's 800-928-7007. Call 800-928-7007 today. If you want to work until you keel over, have less of everything in retirement, or give back more of your hard-earned money to the stock market again, then just ignore me. But if you'd like to protect the money you save, receive a steady, predictable retirement income, and enjoy financial security for as long as you live, then listen to this. You can download a free report that reveals the wealth-building secrets Wall Street and the banks don't want you to know. You'll learn how you can get guaranteed growth, safety, and real prosperity without risking your money in the Wall Street casino and how to get the money you need when you need it simply by asking for it. This is the best way to have a 100% secure retirement and know your money will last as long as you do. To learn more about this method and to get your free report, go to 29security.com. That's the number 29security.com. 29security.com. Go to 29security.com. All right, folks, we're back. We're live. This is America Off the Rails. I'm your host, Rick Robinson. And now, before we run out of show, let's see how much further we can get into the State of the Union. Don't worry, folks. If we don't finish it tonight, there's so much more to cover, I think, because we're down to about 20 minutes that we'll just pick it up on Friday. Again, tomorrow, or actually for those of you listening on Thursday, tonight on K98talk.org, you can hear a special America Off the Rails Roundhouse Edition uh, featuring myself, Stacy, JD, Lou, hopefully Dr. A, and maybe one or two more. And we are going to uh, dissect and go over the Republican debate that happens tomorrow night and give you our take on it. Uh, now, without further ado, let's get another at least one or two clips loaded up. Maybe we can get about halfway through what I wanted to talk about today, which will give us plenty enough to talk about on Friday still. Respond to the changes of our time with fear, turning inward as a nation, turning against each other as a people? Or will we face the future with confidence in who we are, in what we stand for, and the incredible things that we can do together? 
All right, so let's stop right there, and then I'll let it play some more. So, you know, he, he starts talking about how we need to come together and how we need to stop turning upon one another. Isn't this the same guy that's been orchestrating all the a lot of the things that have caused us to turn against one another? I mean, let's face it. You may not like what I'm about to say, but let's be honest. Before President Obama took office, racism was practically dead in this country. Nobody looked at someone whose skin color was different than theirs and automatically assumed they were better because they're Americans. We're all Americans. That was what we knew. That was what we understood. Then, and only then, and that's the reason why there were so many people that were that thought they were ready for an African-American president, which is why Mr. Obama got the nod. Look, I'm not faulting those of you that voted for him the first time. He was a really great salesman. Even I, after our side lost, listened to his first speech after he won, and I wanted to believe some of what he said. I knew that in some ways that we were in big trouble when he started talking about this was the day that the tide started to recede. You know, if he meant that literally, figuratively somehow, he probably should have enunciated it better as to how the tides were receding. Was it the tides of racism? Because if anything, that that tide's no longer receding, it's become a flood. We now have entire groups of people that are not only opposed to each other completely based on their skin color, but now we have average civilians turning against police officers, based a lot on the actions of this particular president. But he's the one that tells us that we need to come together and, and work together as a group. I'm a little confused. Let's keep listening. So let's talk about the future. One without and you in it. four big questions that I believe we as a country have to answer, regardless of who the next president is or who controls the next Congress. First, how do we give everyone a fair shot at opportunity and security in this new economy? Second, how do we make technology work for us and not against us, especially when it comes to solving urgent challenges like climate change? Third, how do we keep America safe and lead the world without becoming its policeman? And finally, how can we make our politics reflect what's best in us? and not what's worse. How can we make our politics reflect what's best in us, not what's worse? Uh, we can start by stopping to elect narcissistic, egomaniacal maniacs, which is one of the reasons why I've been railing against Trump since day one. You know, going back to everything, everything, that our side has said about Obama. These are the same things that should be being said about Trump, but they're not. And I understand from a conservative perspective, you can't have anybody better as a president than a businessman because businessmen know how to make money. And that's what we're concerned about. This country is not doing well. It has not in quite some time. You know, one of the things they've been touting on for the last couple of weeks is the, the fact that 1990s gas prices are pretty great except for the fact that when you take into account the 1990s gas prices with 1970s wages that doesn't work because our money's not worth what it was before and it's not going to be unless we fix it the only way to fix it is to stop fighting that's what he did so many different times in so many different little subtle ways in this speech that he gave last night. He told his side what they wanted to hear. He took pot shots at the side that he doesn't agree with. It's what he's done now for eight years. Eight years worth of these speeches, we've heard nothing substantive. Nothing substantive. I mean, there's a clip that I was gonna play that I don't know if we're gonna have time to get to, so we'll talk about it more on Friday, where he goes in and talks about reigniting the American innovative spirit. Let me tell you what's killed the American innovative spirit. 
overwhelming tax rates, crazy legal loopholes for medical laws. It's killed American ingenuity. Nobody wants to start a business right now because if you start a business right now, it just proves how crazy I am because I had recently started a business and have done so under this administration. Hasn't been easy. I'd probably be a lot further along if the rules were a little nicer to me. But the point I'm trying to get across is if you want to talk about what's killing innovation, we need to get government out of the way. But later, in one of his clips, he talks about how he's trying to reinvigorate administ- uh, the American ingenuity spirit and talks about the moon landing and talks about how, you know, Joe Biden had said something about if we could get people as uh, cogent and as willing to work together as they were during the moon landing, we could probably cure cancer. Da, 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 da. Mission not possible. Last night, Barack Obama announced that Joe Biden was going to be put in charge of trying to find the cure for cancer. This is the same guy who told one of his constituents to not only buy a shotgun, but to fire off warning shots. Mr. Vice President, please, before you give advice, make sure to consult your your local laws. Before you try to cure cancer... Make sure you understand that even you still have to follow rules. Just saying. All right, so let's move on to the next one. The United States of America right now has the strongest, most durable economy in the world. I call my bovine experiment. We're in the middle of the longest streak of private sector job creation in history. Part-time jobs. More than 14 million new jobs, the strongest two years of job growth since the 1990s, an unemployment rate cut in half. Part-time jobs, he's no work. Our auto industry just had its best year ever. Unemployment rate cut in half because they don't count the numbers right anymore. (laughs) Auto industry just had the best record-setting year ever. Pay attention. Where are most of our manufacturing plants now? I wonder why they've had some of the best record-setting years ever. Because their profit margins are lower, because they don't have to pay our crazy taxes, and they're not having people work in their plants that expect to make $50 an hour to sweep the floor. You know, I'm not saying America is not the best country in the world, but one of the things that I found was completely amazing, and one of the things that I don't understand why at some point we've lost sight of that, and don't get me wrong, I know there are plenty of people that make their money sweeping floors and cleaning toilets. So for all of you that do that every day, I've done that with you. I spent most of my college years flipping burgers at one job and cleaning toilets at another. So I understand exactly how you feel. But one of the things that struck me is there was a news star, uh, an article, I think, a few weeks back that I saw about students in Japan. There are no janitors in, in Japan. The students have to stay after and they clean the school. Because the Japanese feel that that don't, not only teaches the children a sense of responsibility but also gives them a sense of accomplishment when the school is dirty when they start and clean when they finish I'm not trying to put anybody out of work what I'm saying is if we're already going to have them do it basically for free anyway why not have them get trained by the janitor staff and have them at least rotate through a few times a week so that we can teach our children that it's okay to work hard that it, that you're not above scrubbing a toilet if you have to do that to put food on your table because that is one of our biggest problems in this country right now along with the fact that most of what he just said was completely false again unemployment rate cut in half look it up for yourself see how they see how they jiggle the numbers now they've been doing it now for over a decade probably longer but they do it Best job creation? Don't know if you could hear me over the applause, but how many of those jobs were part-time? 
below 30 hours. Seasonal work. How many of them were put on the books when they were started and not taken off the books when they were stopped because they're seasonal work? I guarantee you these are all things that they do to cook the numbers because it's a numbers game. Because if you are not confident enough to spend your money, this country dies. Why do you think they want so many of you on government programs? It's just another version of robbing Peter to pay Paul. They give you money. The stores take your money. They get reimbursed from the government for taking what is technically not your money, but taxpayer money. It's basically, it's nothing but a circle. What happens when the circle closes? What happens when the circle collapses on itself? That's just part of a manufacturing surge that's created nearly 900,000 new jobs in the past six years. And we've done all this while cutting our deficits by almost three quarters. We've cut our deficits by three quarters. Anybody notice that the last time I went to look at the deficit clock, it's not moving anymore? I don't know if they fixed it. It's been a few weeks since I've looked. Maybe it was something weird at the end of the year. I'll go back and look again. But the one thing that I can tell you is we have by no means, no means in any way, shape, or form cut our deficits in half. This president has spent more than every other president combined. More than every president before him, all the way back to Washington. And he has the gall to stand in front of you, the American people, and say, but we've cut our deficits in half. Anyone claiming that America's economy is in decline is peddling fiction. Anyone claiming Americans, America's economy is in decline is peddling fiction. Do me a favor. Look it up on your own. See all of the big name economic people that are supposedly peddling fiction. I'm not telling you to listen to little old me. I'm telling you to do your own research. Draw your own conclusions. I'm not here to tell you whether you should be conservative, liberal, or something in the middle. I'm telling you what I believe to hopefully inspire you to find what it is that you believe. And I'm telling you right now, in my heart, I know this man lied through his teeth and has done so every year at the State of the Union for the last eight years. And yet we, as the American people, continue to buy it hook, line, and sinker, lock, stock, and barrel. Every single time. Because he's such a great orator. I mean, who cares if 90% of the credit goes to the teleprompter? He still delivers a good speech. He's one of those people that if you just turn off the brain and listen with your emotions, you buy into what he's saying. It makes you feel warm and fuzzy. It's no different than the trumpet, the trumpets who love the fact that Trump is sticking it to the Republican Party and sticking it to mainstream media and telling them what they want to hear. And it gives them warm fuzzies. This is the reason why I keep drawing the comparisons and the parallels. There are very few differences between Barack Obama and Donald Trump. Whether anyone wants to admit it or not, I don't care. It is the truth. It really is that simple. Let's see if we can get to one more clip before we got out. Got to get out of here. This one's fairly short. If it loads, there it goes. And and we have to make college affordable for every American. No hardworking student should be stuck in the red. We've already reduced student loan payments by, uh, to 10% of a borrower's income. And that's good. But now we've actually got to cut the cost of college. Yeah. Providing two years of community college at no cost for every responsible student is one of the best ways to do that. And I'm going to keep fighting to get that started this year. It's the right thing to do. You know, hang on a second. I'm going to play something real quick. Oh, 
Well, I'm going to talk for a second while I'm getting that queued up, but I'm still going to play something real quick. But, you know, here's the thing. And this is what he's done now for, um, what, seven, eight years? It's all State of the Union. It's all about feel goods and free stuff. Well, I said I was going to play something, but I can't ever remember what we saved it under. Okay, not going to sit here and make you listen to me clicking. All right, so anyway, I was going to play uh, Jason DeWilkins, uh, who was uh, with us formerly, um, put together a great parody of last year's State of the Union address because he's one of the only people that I know that does a nearly spot on Obama impression. And basically, all he did over and over again was say, free stuff, free stuff, free stuff, free stuff, and mix in some applause, and then free stuff, free stuff, and then something else. So that's exactly what this reminded me of. But um, just to take the last couple of minutes and actually touch on the point that was made in this clip, you want to know the easiest, quickest way to make college affordable again? Get the damn government out of the mix. You know what happens when people realize they have government contracts? Do you understand what happens? It's happened since the dawn of time. Everybody looks at a government contract as, oh my God, these people have deep, deep, unlimited pockets. So we can charge them whatever we want. Do you literally think that the government is paying $50,000 for a hammer and $30,000 for a toilet seat? No. You know what they're doing? They're paying a substantially marked up price for said toilet seat and hammer. They're passing that along to the company that actually supplied them with the toilet seat and the hammer. And then they've got it marked up so badly that it looks like where the money's going that it goes into a slush fund that you know is used for all the crap that we as the American people really aren't supposed to know about. So you want to know how to fix the economy and how to fix all of this crap and how to make college more affordable. It's not to make it free because there's no such thing as free. You're passing the cost along to somebody else. Let's fix it by figuring out where all this slush fund money is going. And then maybe we don't have to put more money into the programs. If we could actually figure out why we're paying $50,000 for a hammer and $30,000 for a toilet seat, we could probably fix the problems that we have in this country. But we can't do that. You know why? Because much like what G talked about on his show tonight, there is so much government waste and abuse of funding. Go back and listen to his show if you haven't yet. You need to. He goes through it line item by line item and tells you all the crazy things that the government's doing with our money. At the same time, they're telling you they need more of our money. And then you have this guy saying that he wants to make college free. Okay, that's great. If you really, really want to do that, let's do it with the money that we're already giving you. You've supposedly made us almost deficit neutral at this point. So why can't you use some of that money that you're saving that you're no longer pouring in the deficit to make college free? If you fixed as much as you said you have, why can't you just do it? You've got a pin. We've got to have the money now because according to you, we're not broke anymore. So let's just fix it. But you know what's going to happen? They're going to pass it as a tax increase. You know why? Because he's a liar. Ain't trying to be mean. Ain't trying to tell you things that you don't know. Just trying to tell you exactly how the cow ate the cabbage. To use one of my wife's favorite sayings. Yes, I'm an Okie, so sue me. Now, it is about that time, folks, for me to get out of here. It's been a very long day, and we've got a lot going on for tomorrow, so I need to get ready to get settled in for the night and make sure that I'm bright and bushy-tailed to be able to bring you the best and worst of the debate tomorrow night. I do hope that you've enjoyed this particular episode of America Off the Rails. I am your host, Rick Robinson. Again, I'll be back with you live tomorrow night for America Off the Rails, the Roundhouse Edition, where we do a roundtable discussion of the Republican debate happening tomorrow night on Fox Business News. Don't go away, folks. Late night in the Midlands, up later tonight. Everything.